All right, week two finished and out of the way. The fantasy owners have all been making their case on who is the worst. Pap Smears Benjamin started an IR player. I think he started two IR players, if I'm not wrong, but I still wouldn't even put him in the consideration. Though if he does keep that trend up, he may crack the top three spot um, for the worst, of course. But as long as uh, Stupid Ass continues to start guys like uh, Mitch Trubisky or David Johnson, um, it'll be hard for Ben to pass him. In my last video, I stated how Timmy got Brown, uh, the Rams running back, when I wanted him through waivers. Um, I want to make a public apology. I should have never gotten mad about that because Brown is garbage and fits right in with the rest of the shit show that shit cunt is able to give us. Um, Dick fucks owner Cam Jones also on that list. Um, he's honestly not that bad. He starts the correct players every week. His team is just um, incapable of winning, I think is a good way of putting it. Uh, so for at the moment, I think it's it's a toss up. Could be Timmy, could be Cam, could be Zach. All for the worst. We don't know yet. We'll find out later on in the year. So we're gonna give a quick recap of Week Two before we get into the show. Um, going into Monday, we realized this was an absolutely exhilarating week. It, I mean, it was exhilarating for anybody who enjoys blowout games and doesn't enjoy any type of optimism. Um. Pap smear blew out dumb fuck. Um, dot dot blew out dick fuck. Um, team Gayen was previously gay Gayen, uh, but the team execs decided to rebrand this past week. Uh, we're unsure why that is. We'll try to get word from him here in the coming weeks and figure that out. But um, yeah, he blew out um, shit cunt. And uh, Big Daddy, he completely obliterated the boys in blue, shooting the boys of an underrepresented ethnic group by putting up numbers that we haven't seen since period periods, leg our legendary 2019 campaign. We saw him post 160, and in that 2019 campaign, uh, we saw period period post 160 multiple times. Of course, as the rest of us know, he did still end up missing the playoffs that year after also having the highest PA allowed, I believe. Or, uh, points allowed that was it, it was definitely a bullcrap year but one of the best campaigns we'd ever seen um and finally we got to the game of the week this past week um lakeland booth versus uh smelly finelli it was a good one for the most part i mean lakeland booth found themselves down 94.5 to 135.3 on the surface that looks pretty bad but the lakeland booth still had alvin Kamara, josh jacobs and uh, Drew Brees. Unfortunately, um, only 38 points. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Alvin Kamara put up 38 points, and the Lakeland Booth won uh, by, or then I think all three of them came like 65. Lakeland Booth won by 20 something. Uh, absolute blowout again. This week was garbage. Um, we're hoping this next week will be a little bit better. Um, so we're going to get right into it. We have a lot to uncover this week. Um, it's been wild. I'm going to start by trading or grading some of these trades. Um, commissioner traded away half of his team. I'm not joking. He really got rid of about half of his team. Uh, the first trade being Keenan Allen and Christian Kirk. Uh, Keenan Allen is a monster. Not much to say there. Um, it's tough losing him. And Christian Kirk, very promising player. I believe he's on a second year. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there, but I believe Christian Kirk is on a second year. I think he's just going through a sophomore slump. You see a lot of people go through it. But he's still a valuable player if he can uh, get that chemistry down. But, of course, unfortunately for Kirk, he also has to deal with DeAndre Hopkins joining the Cardinals. And he also has to deal with uh, Larry Fitzgerald, of course, still being on the Cardinals. Uh, we apologize for the lighting behind me. I've been trying to fix this for a while, but I can't seem to do it. Um, anyways, Fennell ends up getting Mozart and Thielen out of that deal from Big Daddy. I'm going to say it, Mozart has a solid line. I mean, I think Mozart is going to be a lot better as Jimmy um, Jimmy Garbage Time continues to play how he is. I think they'll start handing the ball off more, and rightfully so. I think if Mozart can just get his touches up, he will be a solid player under that line. And he also gets Thielen, who is a top 15 wide receiver, to replace Keenan Allen. I think... For both of them, that's a good trade, but I think Fennell definitely won that trade. Um, he's going to get an A- minus for this, and I'm going to have to give Big Daddy a, uh, a C+. 
it's a big gamble. Um, you're losing two solid players for you know Keenan Allen, who we know will produce at some point whenever his chemistry uh, with his new quarterback comes in, but we know he'll produce. And he's getting Kirk, who is the third best wide receiver on that team. Uh, so it's going to be tough. I think he lost two good players for two players who don't. Or for one player with a lot of upside and one player who doesn't have as much upside. Anyways, um, going on to the second trade that com uh, Commissioner Questionable to Play um, gave. He, he also traded DeAndre Swift for T.Y. Hilton. Um, Hilton, I, I like. I think he has a high ceiling. Um, Hilton is good. I, he he's proven that he can put up numbers. The only issue is he's working with Philip Rivers, a new quarterback now. But I mean, he basically didn't have a quarterback before, so it's good to see. I, I think whenever the chemistry comes in, Hilton will be a really good pickup. Um, DeAndre Swift at the moment, I like him, but he just does not get the ball handed off to him. I think if he could get more touches. I think he could be a flex option at the moment, though. Um, basically traded away um, T.Y. Hilton for a bench player. I understand T.Y. Hilton has not performed this year. I would say give him till week five, and he'll start performing again. But um, So for this, I'm going to probably give... Um, I'm going to give Smelly a C+, plus, and I think I'm going to give Cunt Lord a C for this trade. Um, it's nothing too special, but um, you know it definitely could help both sides if uh, depending on which player pops off, of course. And uh, we get on to our final trade that the commissioner made. Um, this one was between him and the boys in blue covered in red from the blood of the minorities they've killed. Um, Tarv dude traded Gurley, who um, I'm gonna say he's been a bust this year, but I'm gonna use that word carefully. He just hasn't performed on a new team well enough, and the Falcons just haven't been using him correctly, so he has really struggled to put up points. Um, he's not getting the ball passed to him, which hurts in a PPR league, and he's not putting up a crazy amount of touchdowns or getting a crazy amount of touches either. So Gurley has been a very tough one. Um, but Fennell ended up trading away Kenyon Drake for that. Um, Kenyon Drake is a reliable 12 to 16 point scorer. So I think Tarv won this trade. Um, it's as easy as that. I mean, Tarv got a running back to a solid running back to flex option player for somebody who at this point I wouldn't even put on my starting lineup. So I'm actually going to give Tarv a uh, B plus for this trade as he was able to fill in some needs that are or some holes in his team or his roster that he needed. And I'm going to give Fennell about a C for this one. It was a really, I'm going to give him a C minus for this. But he has an upside of a B um, if, of course, Gurley starts getting the ball more and maybe gets some touchdowns and, you know, gets more comfortable with this new team. ongoing investigation regarding the worst team owner Zachary and the most hypocritical team owner Dark Dud uh, sparked after a trade which has since been vetoed um, appeared where Dumbfuck received Burrow, Chark, and Melvin Gordon for DJ Moore, James White, and Jimmy Free Agent. Um, rumors of this sparked Tuesday afternoon which led to the commissioner contacting the FBI to look into a possible tampering situation. It's unclear if either team will face a fine or possible suspension, but at the moment, we have no insight on that. Um, we tried to contact the commissioner, but he said legally he can't discuss any information. Um, so here on the booth, we've actually conducted our own investigation. Um, we're actually going to get the first public statement from Mr. Fuck since the investigation started right here. I'm pretty disappointed that it didn't pick up any audio after I just fumed to the group chat for a couple of seconds. Uh, all right, guys. Welcome to take three. Zach is still here on the line. Um, Zach, we're gonna ask you the exact same questions I've asked it uh, t a few times now, but nobody watching this knows that. Um. All right. To start, before I get into anything else, just what the hell's happening, Zach? All right. You know, I, I'm gonna skip all of this bullcrap dialogue. What is going on? 
You haven't hit 100 in two weeks. Your team morale is below the roof. The only trade you tried to make was vetoed by the the, the entire league. W- what is happening? Is is nobody on your organization care whatsoever, or, or are you just trying to tank for the number one overall pick? We're trying to figure this out. Yeah, Derek. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now that my team this year has absolutely no aspirations. It was going nowhere. The reason we made that trade is because we thought it was a fair, just trade. One of the best trades I've seen in my years in this league. So I said, you know what? For this trade, might as well go for it. I thought it was fair. Veto? Okay, oh well. Um, I'm here looking at my shit show of the team, and um, it, it's just not worth even trying. I mean, like my first two games were the easiest games in probably the whole league. I went up against Timmy, then I went up against Ben. Yeah. And I I lost really bad to both of them. I mean, you're only missing out on Cam Jones, which I would consider worse than both of them. I haven't played him yet. Uh, Good luck to Cam Jones. I wish him the best. But, um, yeah, man, we're just looking at a, a really really crappy team. Michael Thomas got me interested into playing this year, and that's one of the reasons why I paid the 10 bucks. Um, I had faith in Thomas. He was my guy last year. This year, he's out. He's injured. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have to make do with what we got. But yeah. I mean, I, I will say your team looks a lot better, but I'm not going to beat around the bush here, Zach. We want to know. I mean, I'm. you've already been notified. Um, and I don't want you getting in trouble with the law, so don't disclose too personal of information on the investigation. But, I mean, I'm sure your lawyers have also told you to keep quiet and not even speak to me. But the only trade you made in two years was vetoed and written off as tampering. The FBI is involved. People are ticked. Zach, I was the trade tampering? Off the record. Uh, there, is, there, there is no evidence to that. That was just pure speculation, and whoever created it, I will sue for obstruction. This is just slander on my name. Um, never did I send money to anyone, and especially not for fantasy football. Besides the ten dollar buy, I'll tell you that right now, there. Um. So Twitter has been putting up the hashtag cancel Zach after um one Twitter user found a screenshot linking your name back to a Venmo account, which paid an anonymous user $5 for, quote, a better trade deal. Um, how do you explain those rumors? I'm sorry, Zach. I plead, I plead the fifth on that one. I can't really talk because my lawyer said I shouldn't. All right. Well, I mean, I don't want to get you in too much trouble here. Um, best of luck to your team. Um, I know they're going to need it. Have you had any trade requests? Has Michael Thomas or Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, any of them wanted out of the organization because they've seen how it's going downhill, or are they trusting the process right now? Um, you know, you have to trust in the process, but with everyone getting injured, you know, there's no one to really come in and fill in the spots. We've done our best. Gardner Minshew came in and uh, replaced it, or replaced a really – a really terrible Mitchell Trubisky. That was great. Um, you know, we're, we're doing the best with what we got, but I, I think everyone knows in their heart that this just isn't our year. We're not going to go run and scour the free agency to pick up other people. Yeah. We're just going to roll with what we got and, um, and hope for the best. But honestly, if we get the worst, we get the number one pick next year. So that's fine. Yeah, I mean, either way, I think it's a win-win. Um, We'll have a talk with Commissioner next week on a possible effect to stop teams from tanking to keep the league competitive. All right, Zach, it was good having you on here. Uh, Best of luck to your team this this, uh, this year. Likewise. Have a good one. Of course. I will bring you more as uh, that story develops. For an hour to move on to the week three predictions. Yay. Can people in this house stop moving around? Lakeland Booth, blessed enough to play dick fuck this week. Timmy. Timmy just ruined that recording. We're going to leave this take in here just so you guys know why Timmy should be ranked within the top three worst um, 
owners. He just ruined that recording. All right. Lakeland Booth, blessed enough to play Dick Fuck. Although Cam has some notable players, such as Lamar Jackson, um, it just doesn't seem likely that he can keep up with Lakeland's high-powered offense, which has put up 300 points this year. Um, the most out of any team, uh, he's averaging 150 a game. Uh, it's unreal at this point. Um, that is... Assuming he doesn't get suspended for the accusations, um, we are going to give the Booth a 74-26 advantage over Cam Jones. Um, the commissioner, uh, with his entirely different roster, of course, just awaiting to get injured, um, they get to play Timmy, who at the moment doesn't have a clear-cut flex, nor does he even have anybody filling in the flex option. So, I mean, that is, of course, at the time of recording this. I don't know who he'll ultimately choose to fill in that spot. But regardless, I've looked at the free agency. I've looked at his bench players. I've looked at who he could start bench. He just doesn't have a chance. I mean, it, his team just isn't good enough. Um, he will fall to a, 61, 30, or a 39-61 disadvantage to Commissioner Fennell, um because his matchups for all of his good players are terrible. And everybody else just isn't good. So it just does not put him in a good spot. Stop being black or I'll shoot you is playing Circle Dot, whose entire future fell in the shambles as McCaffrey was placed on IR last week and AJ Green just sucks. I mean, Alex will need a lot more from some of his sleeper picks before he becomes a threat anytime soon. He's going to need to make some trades, maybe get free agency deals. It's going to be interesting to see because Alex, I do believe, is one of the better owners in this league, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how he comes out of this. Um, Travis, as of this moment, will still hold 68-32 advantage because, of course, uh, he hasn't had the chance to do anything with his team yet. Dumbfuck, assuming he also doesn't face a suspension with the Lakeland Booth, will be forced to play Danny who has been one of the most consistently good players in our fantasy league. I think the lowest his record's ever been is 6-6. Six and six. I don't even think he's missed the playoffs in the past four years. Um, and I had written down here that we were hoping Mitch Trubitsky would get moved to the bench, and I have great news to announce. He has. You heard it in the interview. Um, Gardner Minshew took the starting lineup. He gets to play Miami this week. So, Zach does not look terrible. The only issue is his running backs are still Joe Mixon and David Johnson. So, we're going to assume they're going to put up the same subpar numbers that they have been. Um, but this won't be a blowout game like a lot of you are probably expecting it to be. I think Zach's roster has improved a lot through him actually just moving around his lineup a little bit and picking up players in free agency. Um, and Danny, I mean, Danny is great, but he was also the beneficiary last week of a solid player matchups. Um, so I think Danny will come back down to his 130, 120 a game level. I don't think you'll see another 160 performance out of him. Um, I still think Father holds the 58-42 advantage, but for the first time this year, Dumb fuck might actually put up a fight. I think he may break 100. You've heard it here first. I think he'll break 100 for the first time this year. Finally, the last game of the week, we have Pap Smear versus Gayron. Um, Pap Smear has proved me wrong this year um, in the fact that his players have actually balled out. Um, my, my only issue with him at this point, because um, I know I've, in the past uh, couple of videos, I've said he's a bad owner. I, I've called his team garbage, and I just think that's not true, and I'm here to own up to that. Um, my only issue with him at this point is last week he started Le'Veon Bell, who was on IR, and I believe his flex was also injured. I'm not positive on that. I haven't actually looked, but I'm pretty sure he started two injured players. Lucky for him, he was playing um, Zach, so that was marked off as pretty much an automatic win. Um, I understand Zach's team looks better now, but if you saw it last week, Mitch Trubitsky was on the starting lineup, so you might as well have just handed whoever he was playing the win. Even with two IR players, Pap Smear pulled off the win, and I think if he fixes that lineup, um, he may have a chance against Gayron, who we haven't talked too much about, but Gayron has had quite the solid season. I mean, started off with, I think, almost 130 points in his first game. I think it was around 120-something. And in his second game, he broke over 150, which is a tough task to do. Um, 
So at this point, um, Garen will still hold a 56-44 advantage. Um, and if Pap Smear doesn't fix the starting lineup and take Le'Veon Bell off of it, um, because he's on IR, of course, and also because Le'Veon Bell shouldn't be a starter anyways right now, um, I think those odds increase to 72-28 if uh, Paps do not fix their lineup. Uh, but if the Paps do fix it, 56-44, I think it'll be a close game. And uh, before I head out of here today, um, I want to congratulate Trevor. Um, he won his bet against the commish um, as he failed to post past 140. Um, and also, we're going to throw out a special congratulations to Dardar, who managed to finesse his way out of $5 for betting that the Miami defense would actually contain Josh Allen a little bit. Um, although I almost won back my $5, it was still a bad bet. Um, as always... Godspeed from the Cock and Ball Torture organization, and good luck to only Cameron Jones because um, he desperately needs it more than the rest of us.